Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at a part of the PL SQL language called a package. And a package is just a way of grouping together different procedures and functions that I've created inside my database. Why do packages exist? Well, if you remember we did a video a little while ago on uh, roles and we said that roles are nothing more than groupings of privileges inside your Oracle database. Object privileges, system privileges, and uh, other roles that you can group together and then assign to different users. Package kind of works on the same principle. Package groups together a whole bunch of uh, different procedures and functions and one of the main benefits of being able to put things into a package is that it makes security maintenance a heck of a lot easier. If I group together all my HR functions into an HR package, when a new employee starts, all I have to do is grant execute privileges on the package. And that user automatically has execute privileges to all of the procedures and functions inside that package. Similarly, if that user leaves, yeah, all I have to do is revoke the privileges on the package. So if there were 15 or 20 procedures and functions inside the package, I wouldn't have to do 15 or 20 different statements to grant or revoke privileges, I can just do one on the entire package. So it makes security maintenance a lot easier. It also makes overloading a lot easier. We haven't talked about overloading too much yet, but overloading is the ability to go in and create multiple procedures or functions with the exact same name, but with different parameter lists. And this is really powerful. This allows me to create different uh, pieces of code and it allows my developers who are going to be accessing that code inside of my package gives them a lot of flexibility in terms of how they're going to write their code to interface uh, with my system. If you've read any Java books, overloading is a, a big piece of the Java language and there's a um, this is going to just be pseudocode here there's an example, it's kind of a classic example in the uh, Java world of creating a piece of code called draw shape so I might call draw shape with three parameters five 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 I might call it with four parameters six three six three I might call it with five parameters Just based on the pseudocode here, if I pass it with three parameters, what am I probably trying to draw? I'm probably trying to draw a triangle, right? Three sides of the triangle. If I pass it with four, I'm probably trying to draw either a square or a rectangle. If I pass it with five, I'm probably going to want to draw a pentagon. So this is a way of overloading a function. It has the same name all over the place, but depending on the number of parameters that I pass to it, completely different pieces of code will be executed. We can do that also. We don't have to use a package to do overloading, but packages make it a heck of a lot easier. So there's two main pieces of a package. One is going to be the header, another one's going to be the body. And these are separated out for a couple of reasons. The header is going to have all my definitions for all my procedures and functions inside my package. The body is going to be the actual code that's going to be executed. Uh, that's part of it. This is sometimes also referred to as the spec. One of the nice things about separating things into these two different files where I have a, a header, a spec, and a, a body is that I have the ability to go in there and kind of overload my functions uh, if I was just trying to create uh, multiple uh, overloaded functions inside my database it's a lot trickier uh, to do it if I don't use the package specification it's a lot easier to do it this way where I can just define things in the header I can also hide a lot of the information from people who are going to be interacting with my code uh, one of the real common things to do uh, to protect your code is to encrypt the code that makes up the body so that people can't actually look at it. If you've defined your header information properly, developers should be able to look at what's inside your packages and figure out exactly what your procedure or function that's inside the package, what it actually does, without having to see all of the gory details. 
you may want to protect that information because it's intellectual property. Uh, it could be a software package that you've developed, and you don't want people copying your code, obviously. But real, the real benefit of it is you don't want developers to get too involved in um, the body that's, that makes up your package. They should be able to look at the header or the specification and figure out exactly what your code is going to do, and that's the only thing they really have to interact with. By separating things like this also, I have the ability to define things inside my body. I can have uh, public or private um, procedures and functions that are part of the package. And this gives me the ability to say, OK, anything that's public can be called by anybody who has execute privileges on the package. But I also want to have, let's say, pieces of code that can't be executed, that are unique to the package itself. Uh, those are considered private pieces of code inside your package. They support the other procedures and functions that are inside the package but can't be called directly. Uh, that's a real powerful f feature. Uh, you also have the ability to define variables, types, cursors uh, inside of your package that are unique to the package. It doesn't affect uh, anything else, any other code that people are calling to call any of the specifications inside of your package. Uh, all of these things are unique. The scope is what it's actually defined as. The scope is unique to the package. It doesn't uh, figure out, uh, it doesn't uh, affect anything that's actually calling the procedures or functions inside your package. We also have the ability to initialize code. So inside of my package body, after I've specified all of my uh, different functions and procedures, I can have a piece of code at the end that's not part of anything else that gets executed the first time the package is instantiated, the first time it's called for whatever reason. And that could be really important. It gives me a lot of flexibility to do things inside my package that I uh, normally wouldn't be able to do. Um, gives me a lot of flexibility there. So packages are a real nice way of doing a couple of real sophisticated things inside your database. It makes the security maintenance of all the procedures and functions that make up that package a heck of a lot easier. Again, if I group all my HR stuff together, if I group all my inventory stuff together, if I group all my order information together, when new employees start, get promoted within the company, or uh, leave the company, it makes it real easy for me to say, OK, grant all of the procedures and functions inside this package to user X. Revoke them from user X. It gives me uh, the ability to set up you know, one command that can uh, do all of those complicated things for me. It also makes overloading a heck of a lot easier. And we're going to take a look at that in a second here uh, in some of the packages. And again, overloading is nothing more than having multiple uh, procedures or functions with the same name but with different parameter lists. And based on the different parameter lists, I may take completely different actions, have completely different uh, sets of code to work on uh, those types of things. So I'm going to hop into SQL Developer now. And I'm going to pick one of the uh, packages that's out there. I'm going to go to the ODS user. And you can see that uh, I can look at all the different objects that that uh, ODS user can own. There's packages, obviously. So if I click on the plus sign, I can see all of the different packages. So it looks like I have a couple here. This one looks like bulk delete, bulk load. If I click on bulk load, oops, let me close all of these out first. Too many tabs open. So again, if I go to packages and then I click on bulk load, it pulls up the information for me. So what am I actually seeing here? So I see a whole bunch of procedure declarations, missing indexes. There's another one called missing indexes. Here's one called verify indexes. Another one called verify indexes. Recover, drop indexes. Um, another one looks like drop index, INS, HQ. Not exactly sure what each one of those are doing. But you can see that there's no real code here. I'm kind of defining all of the procedures and functions. This one just happens to be made up of all procedures. But I can have procedures and functions as part of my package. But there's no real code. What I'm looking at here is the spec. I'm looking at the header information where I can define um, all the different things that are going to be inside my body. Why is this important to do? Well, one of the advantages that it gives you is um, if I don't change the parameter list, let's say I, I make a change to missing indexes, or let me pick one here, uh, you know, drop indexes. That's not an overloaded procedure. If I make any changes to drop indexes, if I don't change the parameter list, I don't have to recompile the program that's calling drop indexes. Um, 
under normal circumstances, if this was just a procedure by itself and it wasn't inside of a package, as soon as I made a change to drop indexes, anything that called drop indexes would also get invalidated in my database and I'd have to recompile. But by putting it into a package like this, as long as I don't change the parameter list, I can change the code as much as I want to underneath the scenes and whatever procedure or function or code calls drop indexes doesn't have to be recompiled. So that's a real nice benefit. So I can see all the different things here. And here's an example of an overloaded procedure. I have two procedures with the exact same name, missing indexes. One takes, they, all, they both take three parameters. One is taking uh, the first parameter as an integer in, integer in. The third parameter is an in-out integer. The third parameter is an in-out integer. But the second parameter is completely different, right? For this code, missing indexes, it's taking an attribute list as an out parameter as its second parameter. And the second one is taking a varchar 255 list as an out parameter as its second parameter. So here's an example of uh, two different procedures with, that can be called two completely different ways. And depending on the types of parameters that are passed to missing indexes, the package will be smart enough to say, oh, I'm going to execute this code. If I pass in a varchar 255 list as my second parameter, it's going to execute this piece of code right here. So this is an example of a package spec. And you can see there's a couple of variables and a couple of types that are unique to the package. They serve um, a function within the package, but they don't exist outside of the package. So it doesn't affect what you're calling. It's a way of isolating uh, information so that uh, it makes your coding a heck of a lot easier. What if I actually want to see the body, the actual code that makes this up? Well, if I click on the plus sign here, I can see here's bulk load body. And if I click on that, you can see here's the actual code. So here's missing indexes, and here's the one with the attribute list. And it goes through and it does a whole bunch of stuff. And then there's a second procedure called missing indexes, and here's varchar 255 list. And it does completely different things. And you can see this guy's really short. So the guy with the 255 list, begin and end, you know, he doesn't really do much there at all. Whereas the one with the, that takes in the attribute list, you know, has a whole bunch of parameters, has a whole bunch of cursors that are defined to it, and does a heck of a lot more stuff than this missing indexes one does with the varchar 255 list. So you can see they're completely different pieces of code. If I wanted to have any initialization um, code inside this package, I would have to put it at the very end. This one doesn't have any, and you can tell because end set server mode here, you can see this goes along, all along with this procedure. So there's no begin or end statement after this procedure. If there was a begin and end here with code that wasn't part of a procedure or function, that would be the initialization code for this particular package. So packages give you a lot of really great functionality. They give you the ability to kind of cluster your code together, make security a heck of a lot easier. If you want to do overloading, makes that a lot easier. Uh, there's even a whole bunch more uh, benefits that I didn't have a chance to get into in this short video that as we go through uh, PL SQL coding and looking at some of the advanced PL SQL techniques, you'll see some even more benefits that packages can provide to you. But uh, if you just want a quick summary of what packages can do, they can make your security a heck of a lot easier. They can facilitate the overloading of procedures and functions uh, inside your database a heck of a lot easier. And it also gives you uh, the ability to manage your code a lot more efficiently.